Hi, this is JJ at CCBC. In this video, we'll look at how to create buttons using Flash. Major topics we'll cover are button symbols. The software I'm using for this video is Adobe Flash Creative Suite version 6 on a Mac. So let's take a look at this. Here I already have Flash open. Uh, I have three files open. The first one I'm going to use to create just a a button from scratch. The second one I'll show you an interesting technique you can use with buttons and then the third one I'll show you something you should not do with buttons. Uh, so to start with creating a button symbol is just like making a movie clip symbol. We've worked with those all through the animation chapter. Um, you basically create a vector shape, select it, right click, convert to symbol. Same process for our buttons. So let's create an interesting shape. Uh, we'll use the rectangle. I'll give my stroke a little bit of thickness. I'll pick an interesting fill color and uh, let's do some rounded corners so we'll round off some of these corners to get a, a nice interesting shape and then drag it out on the stage and that's a pretty nifty looking button right there all right so that's a good shape to use we'll select it by double clicking the fill then I'll select the stroke and the fill right click convert to symbol so in the past, we've used the movie clip symbol type. This time we're going to use the button symbol type. So we'll put button under type, and we'll give it a name. I'm not going to be very creative here. We'll just call it button, and hit OK. So now it's been converted to a symbol. You can see the invisible container that is the symbol, and then the vector shape inside. Now in order to edit this, we need to open it up. But before we do, let's take a look at how a basic button functions in Flash. So we'll test this movie and I'll mouse over the button and you'll instantly see that the cursor changes from a arrow icon, the pointer, to the finger icon which indicates this is a clickable entity or a clickable object so if I actually click on it nothing happens at the moment because we haven't really set it up to do that um, so let's set up some visual interactivity with our button so I'm gonna double click this to open it up you'll notice we no longer have the symbol container. We're now down to the vector shape, the fill, and the stroke. And you can see we're inside of our button in scene one. If we look at our timeline, this is very different than the timeline we're used to seeing. Normally it's that numeric timeline with all the frames. This time there's only four actual frames we can use for this button. That's an up, over, down, and hit. You can think of these as the different states of a button. So if you think of the three states of matter, solid, liquid, gas, matter can only be one of those three states. It can't be two of them at the same time. Well, it's the same thing for a button symbol. It can be any one of these at a given time. So the up state is a button that hasn't been pressed. If you're in front of a computer on your keyboard, if you're not actually touching the keyboard, all the buttons are up. The over state would be like putting your finger over top of a button, it's just as you're about to press it. On a computer screen, we'd put our mouse cursor over the button, like we're about to interact with that button. The down state would be when we actually have the mouse cursor over the button and we click on it. So when you're actually pressing a button on your keyboard, that button would be down. Um, the hit state is a little bit trickier to explain. I'm actually going to show you that visually rather than try to explain it verbally. So let's set up the rest of the button, see how it works, and we'll get to the hit state. So in order to set up all the states, we need to put a keyframe for each one. So I'm going to go through and insert keyframes. Now each of my button states has its own keyframe, which allows me to edit them individually. So I'm going to leave the up state the way I want it to be. That's my default button. I'm going to go to my over state, and I'm just going to change the fill color. So I'll pick a new, a new fill color. We'll pick a shade of green. Uh, we'll pick a down state, change that fill color to uh, a shade of gray. Do a little bit lighter. And then for the hit state, the hit state is actually not a visual state like the other three, so I'm just going to make it black. Um, you don't need to do this, but just to prove you're not ever going to see a black, all black button, um, that's part of the hit state. It's not a, a visual property of this button. So let's test it now that we have all the states set up. So there's our up state, the button's not being pressed. If I mouse over it, it switches to the over state, so you can start to see some interactivity with our button and this is great for user interfaces it clearly signals to your audience there's something special about this object I can interact with it the cursor changes the object changes visually something's going on here if I actually click on it we can see the down states we have that gray 
down state that appears if I click and hold. Now the down state, most people aren't going to see that. Most people will click and release on a button very, very quickly. Um, so you don't see too much with the down state. That's why I chose sort of a gray, and I tend to do that with my buttons. Um, it's up to you if you change the color of your down state or not. It's, it's just not going to be seen very much. Um, the hit state, let's take a look at that. So here we have our hit state. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select half the button and delete it. And then we're going to test it. And let's see what happens here. So our button hasn't really changed visually, but what I'm going to do is start from the right side and slowly drift to the left. So as soon as my cursor touches the right side, nothing happens. I haven't actually hit the button because the hit state doesn't start until about the middle of the button. Now that I'm on the left side, this is where the hit state exists, or the area that I defined as part of the hit state. So I can click and interact with the button on the left side, but on the right side, it's just a button. Even if I click on it, nothing happens. Um, it's actually just a shape. It's not even an interactive button at this point. Even the cursor hasn't changed. So that's what the hit state does. I'm going to undo what I did there. Restore my button. So now I have the full hit state. Um, I can't think of an instance when you would change the hit state to look different than the rest of the button. Visually, you pretty want, much want the button to be interactive no matter what state it's in, and the hit state should, should match the other states. Okay, so now we have our fully interactive button. The last thing we want to do is label this button. So one mistake students tend to make is they'll um, put the labels in the same layer as the background of the button. We don't really want to do that. I'm going to lock this. I'm going to call this uh, background of our button, and then we'll make a new layer, and we'll call this label. So here we're going to put a text label on the button. Now we could go and do individual keyframes, but that's actually a bad idea. We want whatever label we put on this button to be consistent across all states of the button. Um, so I'm going to double click on the first keyframe, that'll select all the frames. And now I can go in and use my text tool and create some a text label. I'm going to change this to white since I have such a dark background. Um, I have it centered by default, and then so I can just click on the center of the button. It'll be pretty well positioned. Uh, we'll just call this button. And I'm going to deselect it, go to the selection tool, and use my arrow keys on my keyboard to position it a little bit better. Now I could go in with the text tool and make some changes, make it uh, a little bit nicer if I want to um, in terms of size so that the text fills the button more, but I think that's good enough. Now if I run it, you'll notice I can click on my button, I can mouse over the button, and the text label doesn't move. It's in one position no matter what the different states are. It looks very nice. This is a nice easy interactive button to create. So let's look at something a little more advanced you could do with a button. So here I've set up a button. Um, it's in the shape of the state of Texas. So let's say I wanted to make a map of the United States and I took the time and made 50 different shapes, one for each uh, state in America, and uh, convert them all to button symbols. What I did with this one, if I open it up, you can see I actually don't have a label in the first frame here. I actually put an empty keyframe in there, but I have some filled frames here that you can't see in the up state. So when I go to the over state, you'll notice here you can actually see the label for Texas. Um, so if I run this, when my project first loads, I might see a whole map of the United States, but as I mouse over different states in the Union, there's Texas, and the text label would appear underneath the button. You could have the text label appear on top of the button. You could even have it so that if I mouse over the state, it gives me a whole bunch of information down below, say the state bird, state flower, um, when it was um, brought into the union, etc. Um, there's a lot of things you could do with this overstate that introduces new information to your project. Just remember this is a clickable uh, object, so your audience is going to expect when I click on it, something should happen. Um, and you could make the click show information. It's up to you. One last thing I did want to show is what not to do with a button. Um, let me run this one real quick. 
So this is a common mistake students make. They set up their button, they set up their label layer, and then they put a bunch of keyframes in. And when you mouse over it, you notice it's not that easy to put the text in exactly the same spot on all of the different states of the button. So if we open this one up, here you can see I actually went in and did several different keyframes. Um, and the pitfall of this is each text label could be two or three pixels off, which isn't a big deal in the larger scheme of things, but when it comes to polishing your projects and doing professional work, um, that's a huge deal. So if we compare that to the first button we made, which has absolutely no shifting in the text because we did the, the label layer as all one set of frames, there's only one keyframe at the beginning which sets the position for all the uh, successive frames after that. Um, this is a much more professional, better looking, much more polished button if you were to make one. So hopefully you learned something about making buttons. See you in the next video.